door. All right, Hasa door. And uh, you want to give that young lady a, a book? That's that, that. It's already in that book. Yeah, it's already in that book. You have a. Uh, this is the third volume of the Hebrew English interlinear that I wrote. Uh, and uh, we follow along. We, it tells you how to say the Hebrew at the very top. Then you have the Hebrew written down below that. And then right down below that, you have the English translation. Below that, you have the grammar. And also, you have the uh, page number in Brown, Driver, and Briggs, or Kohler, and Bumgarner, or Gesenius, or, uh, or whatever uh, book that I'm quoting from. Yeah. And then, of course, this is what? What is this, Cindy? Okay, this is a Hebrew lexicon. This is not the analytical lexicon is by Davidson. All right, that tells you every word in the Hebrew Bible and and it declines it or conjugates it for you. Okay, this one here is simply a lexicon. This one is the one that's that's uh, cross referenced to your book. All right, and I'll put this on camera also. Uh, these classes go out all over the world uh, every every few hours. So if you're caught up, if you're, thinking, you're behind in anything, you're all out there. You can go back and study. Marilyn, would you give her a card also, please? A card. A card. So she can go to the website. Oh, like that. that. They're, they're right on the table there. Oh, I saw that. Right there. Uh, they are. You can go to uh, discover the work with Dr. Jim.com. Anyway, this is the. Ron Robert And then this is a, an interesting book. This is called The Culture of the Hebrew. It's kind of all the rabbinical writing about the Hebrew culture. Okay? The Hebrew culture. Give them some of that. And uh, anyway, in here it tells you all the different ones. You can learn uh, all the different things. This is uh, Lilith. The Legend of Lilith. I've I, I talked about the legend of Lilith before. All of all that kind of stuff, and homosexuality, and rebellion, and all of that, and everything. Hebrew girl that grows up this bad. They say Lilith is getting in your dreams, and every Hebrew boy that grows up this bad, Lilith is in your dreams when they have ovulus. Anyway, this is uh, this is the culture of the Jews, which is pretty interesting. You get this at like Barnes and Noble or whatever. And, uh, Cindy, you remember this one? Kabbalah. 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 Anyway, this is the Hebrew Kabbalah. And I'll refer to all of this stuff off and on as we go, the Kabbalah. And it tells about all different kinds of things. And that, uh, okay? about to come off. So I'll refer to those things. I'm going to put you forward here, young lady. That's Greek. I teach Greek also on Wednesday. The classes are at 4.30 and at 6 o'clock. I don't know why they put them in a bulletin roll. But the, of course, the one on six o'clock on Wednesday night. I guess they get that one in there, right? This this one at four thirty. I don't know why they do that. <coughs> Genesis twenty-seven and verse one. Genesis twenty-seven and verse one. Uh, do you want to review the Hebrew alphabet again? Does that help you guys? Do you like that? Huh? Young lady. Uh, what what is her name? What is it? Kathy. Okay, Kathy. Uh, do you, have you had any Hebrew? Not any Hebrew at all. What am I just right on the board? Anybody tell me? That's an olive. What does that stand for in ancient Hebrew? An ox's head. An ox's head. All right. Now, we don't usually do this a lot, but I'm going to do it for you tonight, okay? And then base. Base stands for what? Base is what? The house. All right. And then we have Aleph and Base make a Hebrew word. 
one of the first Hebrew words in the Hebrew lexicon. What is that? Abba, which means what? The father or the head of the house. And that's the way Hebrews, Hebrew is. Marilyn, all that's in those books already. Okay. Okay, it's there. Yeah. All right. And then Gamel. Gamel. Make sure Ava's got one. Gamel. Gimel is what? What is a sign? That's a camel hump. All right, a camel hump. Gimel. All right. And if in the front of your books, nearly all, I think those, you'll have a Hebrew alphabet. You have one in yours, don't you, brother? Yeah. All right. And, that, and uh, Kathy, there's one in the front of your book also, the, uh, the Hebrew alphabet. It should be real, right in the there, right there it is, right on your right side. Camel or Gamel, and then Daleth. Daleth means what? Door. All right, it's a door. Okay, and then he, a window, and then wow, that's a reaping hook, a reaping hook, like a scythe, and then uh, Zion, that is a weapon, and then, and here we have the word cheth, it says heth, but it's got a ch, ch, like right in your throat, like you're clearing your throat, like on cheth, like that, all right? And that's like in fence. And then Tate. Tate. That's like a snake. All right? Like a snake. It looks like a snake, doesn't it? A snake coiled up. And then we have Yod. Yod, which is hand. Like the hand like this. And then we have Koth. Koth is an open hand. All right? And then we have uh, Lamet. Lamet. That's the same thing as our L would be, okay? Lamet. Halila. What did I say? Halila. The night. All right? Lila means night. Halila. The night. And it's got lots of lamets in it, okay? Halila. And then Mame. Mame is waters. All right, waters. And then Nun. A Nun is a fish. What is a Hebrew equivalent to Nun? Hebrew equivalent. I mean, uh, the Greek equivalent. None. <laughs> That's real easy. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, Samic. Samic is like a prop. Oh, by the way, uh, none was a fish. And the, and the Samic is what? I went to a sushi place the other night. Yes. I told my grandson he's three to order dog because that's fish. Fish, yeah. yeah. Like Dagon. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, and then iron. That's eyes. All right. And then pay. What do you think that would be? Pay is a mouth. A mouth. Pay is a mouth. And it is fee in Hebrew. In Greek, or I'm in Hebrew with a little dot in the middle of that pay, that, or with a little tongue in it. That means a a, 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 a ph sound, and then with a dot in it, it is a p sound. Okay. And uh, and in Greek, you have two p's: a ph sound and a pi sound. Pi. Now, kof, kof. That's the back of the head. And then resh, resh, rosh, resh, which means head, by the way. Rosh is head. All right? And then sin and shin, the same letters, but the uh, on sin, it is on the left-hand side. On shin, it's on the right-hand side. And then we have tau. Tau is the cross, by the way. Tau. Now let's go to... Genesis, the 27th chapter, verse 1. We have a lot of theology to see tonight, a lot of preaching in this verse, in the next few verses. So don't worry about being flabbergasted with Hebrew. You're going to learn the Bible real deep. That's what the most important thing is, is the learning of the Bible. You'll learn Hebrew as you go. Simple as that. Uh, Rebecca and John got up the other night and 
introduce the class to the Greek students. We had a kind of new people coming in that layer, and they said, don't worry about learning Greek. Learn the Bible. Don't worry about learning Hebrew. You're going to learn Hebrew as you go by induction. I've been teaching Hebrew and Greek by induction for 40 years. Your mother and dad, uh, brother, uh, uh, learned a little bit of Greek, whether they wanted to or not. When we, I taught them the book of uh, Revelation from Greek. All right? Now, we'll say the words. You'll see the Hebrew down below, but we'll say the word. And the first word is wahi. See, it's written up there, wahi. Wahi. And then ki. And zagin. And yichak. Yichak. What is yichak? In, he, in English, what is Yitchak? Isaac. His name means laughter. Yitchik, Yitchik, Yitchik. All right. And then, wa tik hina. Hinal. Mariot. Wa yikra. Et. Esau. Beno. Hagado. Wa yomer. Hila, Bene, Wyomer, Ida, Hila, Henine. Now let's go back and look at this. I titled this this uh, this message uh, uh, "Controlled by an Ungodly Appetite." Uncontrolled by an ungodly appetite, or controlled, possessed by an ungodly appetite. Their God was their bellies. Their God was their bellies. Okay? We're going to look at some New Testament scriptures and, and concerning this. Uh, and became. Look at that word. Now, in Genesis 1 and 1, every time you see the word was, substitute the word was in Genesis, the first chapter, with the word became. And the earth, she became formless and voice, Genesis 1 and 2. It says in Genesis 1 and 1, Barashid, bara, Elohim, et hashemayim, we et haaretz. And then it, it says, we haaretz, hathya, tuhu, abohu. In beginnings, created and finished perfectly, because that's perfect tense, isn't it? When, I, when, when the, the uh, verb in Greek or in Hebrew means perfect tense, what does that mean? It's completed. It's done. It's finished. All right, so let's look at it. Barashith bara. In beginnings, not in beginning, not in the beginning, but in one of the beginnings, okay, because this is a plural word. In one of the beginnings, created and brought to a complete order and completion. That's way back in eternity past on that map. See that map? Way back yonder. It says, uh, et. Et is what? In Greek. I mean Greek, Hebrew. It's what? Sign of the direct object. This action is going that way. Very strong action is going that way. And in Greek, what would be the equivalent? Ace. And the idea, the grammatical idea of it is what? I don't want to scare you people to death, but I, my students, I can get rid of get rid of somebody after three or four years in my classes, and they go to a Greek. Uh, take Greek classes like in Louisville, Kentucky, or Southwestern, or whatever, and they go back there and they know more than their teachers. One of my students, Ken Blinn, went back there and they came to the Greek word. He said, yes, ace, extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. That's the action. And the teacher said, what? <laughs> I was talking to Roger one time, and I was explaining John 1 and 1 to him, and, and he looked at me, he says, hold on here, boy. Hold on here. Say, How much Greek have you had? Well, I said, I've had nine years of Greek in class, and I said, I've been teaching at that time about 20, 25 years. He said, oh, wait a minute. He said, I only have three years of Greek. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, you slow down. <laughs> well, the action in the languages, in the, in the original languages, is beautiful because you don't get it in English. You miss the whole boat. As simple as that. Et and ace. Action is going that way. Extension and limitation of thought or verbal action. In Greek, it means you can go through the action, right through the object and then beyond. In Hebrew, it basically has the idea of here comes the action on this next object. 
Okay. In beginnings, Elohim. Elohim, that's the whole name for God. Elohim in, in Greek, or in Hebrew, is the whole Godhead is what it's talking about. In Greek, what is that word? Theos. All right, Theos. It looks almost like English. See there? T-H-E-O-S. Theos. We got our word theology from that. Theology. All right. In, in beginnings, created and absolutely finished Elohim at Hashimayim. Hashimayim, what is that? Ha is the, the heavens. What does heavens literally mean? It says in the uplifted waters. All right. Everything above the earth. The earth at that time had an ocean in the sky. An ocean was completely surrounding the earth like a bubble. And it was wide and thick. The whole earth was covered, uh, surrounded with an ocean in the sky. All right. And that is the Hashemayim. Remember, Mame? Mame is waters. All right. Hashemayim, the uplifted waters. And then it says, uh, with, with in Hebrew is what? And. In Greek, it is ha. All right? With. All right? With. Page 253 in your Hebrew lexicon. This was 208. So you can go back and you can look in those lexicons and you'll see that. With. With ha aritz. With ha aritz. He created the heavens. And after the heavens were all created, and by the way, the word heavens there doesn't really miss mean the uplifted waters. It means the whole universe. You can use the word universe there, okay, in Genesis 1 and 1. And then after ever all that was created, he took the earth and placed it in exactly the right place. Exactly. Et haaris, in exactly the right place. Just exactly where it would be and what would happen What's he going to put on the earth? All kinds of animal and plant life, and it has to be sustained. Okay? And then in Genesis 1 and 2, it says, with and ha'aretz and the earth. Ha'ya. Ha'ya. What does that mean? Third person singular. Gal present. Verb. That's for the word or. Uh, that's where the word Jehovah comes from. And the earth, she became. She became. She wasn't was. She changed from one state, a completed perfect state, to a state of mass, muddy, thrashed up, conglomerated chaos. All right? She came from a state of perfection to a state of chaos. And the earth she became, Bohuatuva. And then it said, Spirit God did what? What did Spirit God do? Spirit God suffered over, worried over, mourned over the faces, El Pane, of the deep of the deep. And that's when we have the reconstruction. And in that, we have the whole plan of salvation of mankind too, don't we? Now that's a whole lot different, it says in any English Bible. Isn't it? See what you missed? <laughs> See what you missed? Now over here, you're going to miss a whole lot of things too if you just study it from the English Bible. And became, and the name Jehovah, the name Jehovah, is in this word. That's the word right there. Okay? Jehovah. What does the name Jehovah mean? Here we have the word. The word here. Wahi. And it says, and became. So what is the name Jehovah? If that's the root of the word Jehovah, and the first place that the root of the word Jehovah is found in, is in Genesis 1 and 2, and the earth she became formless, what does the word Jehovah mean? What does it mean? 
He who shall become. Who shall become are the becoming ones. Now, isn't that beautiful? <coughs> Tell me in the New Testament where that word is absolutely fulfilled. In Greek. <laughs> not, that's not that easy now. All right. So what, what's the verse? <laughs> what's the verse? John 1.14. John 1.14. And it says, Kai Hologos Sarxagenito. All right. Kai Hologos. And the word, or the Jehovah, because see, when John was writing the gospel according to John, he was not talking about the Greek word logos, but he's talking about the Hebrew idea, the bar. Every time a Hebrew came to the name Jehovah, he did not speak it. But he referred to it as the word, Hadavar, or Hashem, the name, or modern, what would they say? Adonai. John 1.14 says, Kaiho Logos Arxaganito, and the word and the Jehovah flesh he became. And we have the fulfillment of the Jehovah type. All right? And this is where I'm giving you a little extra here, you, you the newcomers, okay? And I'm probably boring you to death. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and became key when Zagen, when old Yitchik, when old geriatric that's the word in, in, in Greek, geriatric. When you become geriatric, that's me, you know. You see me crippling in here and crawling in here at time. When it became geriatric, third person masculine singular, cow perfect. The first one and became as third person masculine singular, cow while consecutive imperfect. Page 224 and page 243. By the way, that's where the root of Jehovah is now. Okay? When old, when became old, had become old, you check. And uh, they had become weak or dim. They had become weak. He's talking about third person feminine plural, cow, wow, consecutive, imperfect. Had become weak and stayed weak. He's talking about his eyes. His eyes. His eyes had become weak. Why did why did Isaac's eyes become weak? God had to blind that fellow. God had to blind Isaac because he would have put the blessing on the wrong man. We know already that Esau had sold his birthright out to Jacob, because he didn't care anything about it. He didn't care anything about eternal. He just wanted, he had an appetite right now. I'm hungry. For one meal, the Bible says. Esau sold his all his birthright and all his, he was the patriarch. He was going to be the patriarch. He was going to be the spiritual leader of his whole family, and he sold it away for nothing. For one meal. And it wasn't at the Waldorf Astoria either. It was the cheapest commodity in the land, which was lentils. Then old beans are pretty cheap when you buy them, not in a can, but the real thing, you know. That's a pretty cheap commodity. When you see flour and you see ten old beans going up and rice go up, you know that you have inflation. That's a base commodity. This was a ba the, the lowest price commodity in the land. And he sold his whole spiritual inheritance for one, one meal of the cheapest commodity. That's like selling one meal for a bowl of pin old beans. Selling your whole future for a bowl of pin old beans. His appetite was his God. His belly was his God. And became the in all his eyes from seeing. All right. See that word from there? That's ma'am in the front of that. Ma'am. From seeing. Cal infinitive construct. Ra. Ra. What word, what title of Jehovah comes from this word eyes or sight? What is the title of Jehovah that comes from this? Jehovah what? Jehovah what is the title? 
Thank you very much, young lady. You must take the teacher home. <laughs> <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. That's right. Jehovah was seen. Remember, on, uh, in Genesis, the 22nd second chapter, when, when, Abraham, when Abraham offered Isaac, he, he said, the Lord was seen. Now, there's something else in the English Bible. You're going to miss it. He saw Jehovah. And then in the New Testament, when Jesus was talking to those Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes and the Levites, he told them, Abraham delighted to see me or to see my day. He saw him. He was walking there in front of Abraham. All right. His eyes had become weak from seeing, and he called Esau, and he called. And he kept on calling, Yikra. And he called and he kept on calling. Third person, masculine, singular, cow, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Now, as we study Greek and Hebrew, you're going to learn English also. Uh, present indicative active in Greek, it, there has... We'll have singular, and the same way in, in Hebrew, by the way, same way. You have singular and you have plural persons, singular and plural. First person singular, Cindy, who is that? I. Second person singular, you. Third person, huh? he, she, or it. And by the way, Hebrew and Greek is masculine, feminine, and neuter. You'll know exactly what's going on. Remember when I told you a while ago we looked at his eyes became? And they had become weak or dim. It's talking about his eyes. Third person, feminine, plural. All right? Now, first person, plural is what? We. Second person. What? You all. You and All right? You all. All right? Third person. They. All right. Infinity, two. Always say omenetta use the aim. All right? In Greek, that's how you conjugate the verbs. All the verbs in Hebrew and Greek are conjugated. So when I write down here the verbs, it'll be third person, masculine, singular, cal, wow, consecutive, and perfect. Okay? So you know all about the action. And you know who's doing the action. If you took that one word out, in English, we have a very poor, crippled language. When I want to think about something in English, I have to think about it in Greek, because Greek makes sense. <laughs> English is crippled, okay? Anyway, in, in English, we have to put all this. Now, in now German, Gettermann, Gettermann is inflected in it. It's inflected. What I mean by inflected? Does anybody know what inflected? All of you know what inflected means. Raise your hand. All you that do not know what inflected means, raise your hand. Okay. Inflected means that the ending of the word tells you what part it plays. Okay. Seals in Greek. That Omicron sigma on the back of it. That's a sorry thing tells you that it's nominative, singular, and masculine. All right. In Hebrew, we have the same things. We have the same ending. All right. So that's inflected. When you say, uh, when I would say, uh, mija, what would I mean in Spanish? Mija. Mija. A little girl. Mijo. A little boy. See, Spanish is inflected. All right? English, you say girl or boy. You've got to provide the, the word, little girl or little boy. In those languages, it's, in, it's already there. It's inflected. Okay? And in Greek, the definite articles, that's the thes, it are all inflected. You know exactly what. You can take one the out of Greek, like ho, right there. What part does that play? Tell me all about that word. It's masculine. It's, masculine, it's singular, and what else? It's nominative. It's a case of the subject. Okay? And Hebrew is easier. 
Hebrew is much easier because ha, that's ha in Hebrew, okay? And that's masculine, feminine, or neuter. The word will tell you what it is, okay? And became his eyes weak from seeing. God had to blind him. Why, Yikra, and he called and kept on calling et. See the sign of the direct object there. He's going to put some action on Esau. What does Esau mean? What does Esau mean? Harry. Harry. Esau's name means Harry. On Harry, okay? His son, Benal. Benal. Ben is the word for son. When you see the name Benjamin, that means what? Son of the right hand. When you have to see the name Ben Susan, that means son of Susan. Anytime you see Ben in front of a Hebrew, it is son of. What is the Aramaic equivalent to that? Bar. Bar. Almost the same. Aramaic and Hebrew are very closely related. All right. Bar Jesus. What's that mean? Son of Jesus. Ben Asus. Son of Jesus. Same thing. Hebrew and, and Aramaic. Okay. Well, we got old Esau, Harry here. The son. Now, what does the word son, Ben, what does it really mean? What does it mean in Hebrew? What's it means according to a pattern. When you have a child, when you bring forth a child, that child comes forth according to a pattern. Your pattern. Your DNA. Okay? Ha Gadol. The oldest or the elder. Wyomer. Now, Hannah always likes that word, Wyomer. Wyomer, it says, and he said, third person, matching the singer, cow, well, consecutive, imperfect. Page 55 and page 65 in uh, Kohler and Bumgardner. Okay. It comes from the, the root, Amer. Amer is the root. Do you see the word wa on the front of that? That's and. And this is inflected into many Hebrew words. Inflected in it. So you'll start out, why, why he, and it became, and then we have why Yomer, and he said, Elah unto him, Bene, my son. Why Yomer? And he said to him, Elah, behold me, look at me. Here I am. Look, Daddy. He's pretty old at this time. Now, let me tell you a little bit of history of the story before. Esau is his daddy's favorite son. Esau is a uh, uh, basically a person that is not interested in anything foundational about anything. Who was making the living for the family, by the way, at this time? Was it Esau or Jacob? Jacob was a was the breadwinner of the family. Esau was a playboy. That's all he was. Ha! Ah, party animal. That's what he was. Didn't care about anything permanent or, or he lived for the moment. Okay? He was a party animal. Okay? Lived for the moment. And, of course, Jacob is out there working. He's out there raising all the sheep. He's out there suckling the calves. He helps pull the calves. By the way, he's got all kinds of animals. He's got goats and he's got sheep. And he's got a lot of cattle. All right? He's got goats and sheep and cattle and, and donkeys and, and camels. All kinds of animals. And he's out there taking care of all of them. He is the cowboy. He is a cattleman. He is a sheep herder. All of that. That's what Jacob's doing. He is taking care of all the family. And Esau doesn't care anything about anything. All he wants to do is fill his belly. So he goes out and he's a hunter. He hunts and he hunts and he hunts and he plays around and chases women, does whatever he wants to do, but he's not interested in taking care of anything spiritually or financially with the family or feeding them. And now the old guy, old Isaac, do you think that Isaac heard about Esau selling his birthright to Jacob? Do you think there's any way in the world that he didn't hear about it? Do you think that Rebekah told him anything about Jehovah appearing to her? 
when she was pregnant and she was having all this indigestion with these two babies wrestling? Do you think, do you think Isaac heard about, God appeared to me today. You know what he told me? The lesser shall be greater than the... The lesser shall be the greater. The firstborn is not going to be the man. That's not going to be his choice. That's not God's choice. It's going to be the, the lesser. The youngest is going to be his choice. And, of course, we have in the Bible what we call the rejection of what? The rejection of the firstborn. You must be born again. The first time you're born, that's all that does is get you in hell. <laughs> you must be born again. Okay? You must be born again. Well, I think knew all of this. Yitchik, say Yitchik. Yitchik knew about all of this. He knew that Jehovah had appeared to his wife. He knew that Esau had sold his birthright to his brother Jacob. He knew that Jacob was the breadwinner and the leader in the family spiritually in every other way. Okay? By the way, Jacob wasn't... So many Bible teachers and stuff played Jacob down as some little old witsly, skinny boy out there with he's running after his mom. Jacob was a strong man. Jacob wrestled with Jehovah and wouldn't turn him loose. Jacob was a big, strong man. All right? Get the little idea of the little skinny little mama boy out of your mind because this is a man here. Jacob is a real tough guy. And he's out there working all the time. That's what he does. He works for a living. He doesn't go play video games like he's on. <laughs> he's not some playboy. All right? Now, uh, go to Romans, uh, the 16th chapter and verse 18, and Proverbs 13 and 25. Genesis 48 and verse 10, and 1 Samuel 3 and 2, and... and uh, Let's just look at those for a few moments. Let's look at those different verses in the New Testament. See, I'm not all wet on all this. You might say, oh, that preacher, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's making up stories. All right, I do tell stories, but usually they're all true stories. All right? Unless I tell you about some joke or something. Romans uh, 16 and verse 18. Cindy, are you there? <laughs> For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites and base desires, and by ingratiating and flattering speech, they beguile the hearts of the unsuspecting and simple-minded people. All right. They serve their own, the God of their belly, don't they? Who's, whose God was Isaac? Here's one time we have a woman that is the spiritual leader of the family. Not Isaac. It's Rebecca. Isaac's going to go the wrong way every time. Because his God is in his belly, and he's got an ungodly appetite for wild game. There's nothing wrong with liking deer and venison and stuff like that. But this man, it led him. He was controlled by it. All right? Proverbs 13, 25. Where, who, who's over there? Uh, Kathy, are you any place around? No, no. Anyone over there? Uh, Roger, are you over there? The righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite. The stomach of the wicked is in need. All right. This man had an ungodly appetite. His God was his, his belly was his God. His appetite was his God. All right. How about uh, 1 Samuel 3 and 2? 1 Samuel 3 and 2. 1 Samuel 3 and 2. Are you over there any place, Brother Abe? No? Oh, a Korean Bible. All right, Korean. Uh, Chris, are you there? Oh, you were. All right. Okay. Yes. All right. Eyes had become all waxed over. They could not see. You know, probably had uh, cataracts or something. God sent this man cataracts. I'm telling you, God blinded this man. Okay, and then uh, that all, that was all I gave you, but right now wasn't it? All right, Genesis uh, forty-seven and twenty-nine. Forty-seven and twenty-nine. That's the same book, Barashith. By the by the way, what does Genesis mean? Barashith. What does Genesis mean? Beginnings. Thank you, young man. You got A plus for tonight. You first time in the class. Beginnings. All right. Forty-seven, twenty-nine. Are you are you there, brother? 
729. Yes. not bury me in Egypt. Now, Jacob, Jacob was a man of faith. He was the one that God changed his name to Israel. Remember I told you that he was a strong man? He wrestled with Jehovah himself, and he wouldn't turn Jehovah loose, but Jehovah crippled him. All right? Now, I think that really, between those two boys, Harry and Jacob, I think Jacob was the stronger of the two. I'm going to tell you something. When you go out and work hard every day long, when you go out and cowboy and things like Jacob did, you, you get strong. He was carrying cattle around on his back, not a little old wild goat or, or deer or something. He was out carrying cattle and goats and pulling them too. Romans 9 and 13. Romans 9 and 13. Let's look at that also. We're going to go on here in a little bit further. Romans 9 and 13. There's a lot of truth a lot of application in these few verses right here. We don't need to miss them. Brother Don, are you over there? Yes. Just as it was written, Jacob I loved, but he saw I hated. Who said that? That's Jehovah speaking, isn't it? Do you think that Isaac aware that Jehovah wasn't too happy with uh, Esau? Oh, Harry, do you think so? But what did Isaac want to do? He was going to bless him anyway, regardless. Let's find out and let's see here. Now, we're going to look at some more New Testament scriptures. Wyomer, 27, verse 2. Hene, nah, zaganti, lo, yadati, yom, moti. All right. And he said and kept on saying, Behold, now I am old. I have become weak. All right, I have become geriatric. First person's construct singular, cow perfect. See, that's the word for the earth she had become. All right, the earth she had become. I have become perfect tense. I have become old. Not adverb of negation. What is the, what is the adverb of negation in Greek? Who knows that? Ook. What is the particle of negation? May. <laughs> well, may is may and ook and may. Okay. Ook may u the mia. <laughs> no, not me, not one. All right. I have known yadati. Not I have known the day, the yom. Yom, that means day. The day of my miote. Miote. Now, in the Old Testament, remember when we went through all those places, all the people back when they lived 900 and 800 and 700 years, and it said at the end of it, they died. Always at the end, they died. I'm going to write down, I'll read what I read here. Your God is your belly, your appetite. All right? Sometimes God has to blind a person to carry out his own purposes. If Isaac would have been able to see, Isaac would have given the blessing to Esau instead of Jacob, and Jehovah God, Jehovah Elohim, hated Esau. Jacob, Israel, was to be the promised seed, not Esau. But regardless of God's wishes, Isaac was thinking with his belly, just like Esau thinking with his belly when he sold his birthright. Hebrews 11 and 20. Hebrews 11 and 20. Go there. See, maybe you're learning a little bit of Hebrew today. You're getting introduced to it gradually and slowly. And as you study it, you stay in the class for another year or so, if the Lord willing, lets me live that long. 
you will learn a whole lot. You'll look back and say, oh, I know that. I know that. You'll learn a little bit. Who's got Hebrews uh, uh, 11 and verse 20? Was that the verse? Uh, Kathy, you over there? Nope. Uh, Don? All right. By faith what? By faith what? Okay. Bless Jacob. Yeah. By faith. By whose faith did he do it? Rebecca's faith. <laughs> Rebecca had to trick him. But he really believed that if he blessed this man, that Jehovah was going to bless him. And he just tried to give the blessing to the wrong one. Because he liked this. Philippians 3.19. Philippians 3, 19, and then Hebrews 12, 16, and through 17. Philippians 3, 19, and Hebrews 12, 16, through 17. And then Acts 9 and 1, actually through 18. Titus 1, 10 through 14. Romans 6, 12 through 16. Romans 6, 20 through 23. And Jude 1, 11 and 12. Or Jude 11 and verse 12 also. That's a lot of... See, this... Doctrine, what happened here in the book of Genesis, isn't alone in the Bible. It's not alone. This isn't a something that just happened and we forget about it. It was repeated. And this lesson, the reason why we have it in the Bible is because we needed to know about it. All right. Cindy, where are you? Where? Philippians? Read that for me, would you? They are doomed in their fate is eternal misery, perdition their God is their stomach, their appetites are sexual body, and they glory in their shame, citing the earthly things and being of their heart. All right. Their God is their belly. Their God is their appetite. And that's what was going on here. That's what was wrong with Esau. His God was his appetite. All right. And Hebrews 12, 16 and 17. Hebrews 12, 16 and 17. And somebody go to the last book of the Old Testament in Malachi, the first chapter. All right, Malachi chapter 1. And who's got Hebrews 12, 16, 17? Uh, young man, Brother Brown, are you over there? 12, 16, and 17. Yes. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like you saw for a single male sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. All right. For a single solitary meal sold his inheritance. A godless person. Say godless. The only god he had was his belly. He carried with him every place he wanted. Okay. And Malachi 1. Malachi 1, 1, 2, 3. Malachi. Who's got Malachi? Uh, are you over there, young lady? Can you read that for me, Chris? Okay, now let's go back. Now, this is the last message to Israel, isn't it? Malachi, this is the last message to Israel. Now, what is the last words that God leaves with Israel? Jacob I loved, and Esau I hated. And guess who's on the throne of Israel when Jesus is born? Esau's descendant. Boy, what a ridiculous mess. And they fell for it. They fell for it. They just went ahead. All right. Jeremiah 49, 17 through 20. Jeremiah 49. This isn't an isolated incident here. Jeremiah 49, 17 through 20. Who's over there? Jeremiah. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah. Uh, are you there, Brother Brown? Uh, 49, 17 through 20. 49, 17 through 20. That book's got pictures in it. Yeah, so. Uh, 
I could read that. Bible from Dunning. <laughs> 49, 17 through 20. Jeremiah. Uh-huh. All right, God judged Esau's, Esau and his descendants. He judged Petra would become a wasteland. Petra would become a wasteland. And many Bible scholars believe that Petra is going to place that, be the place that Israel is protected, what's left of Israel, at the end of the tribulation period. All right. Now, uh, Look in Acts 9 and 1 through 18. That's where the subject is. But see what happened to Paul, the apostle. Actually, Saul was his name. Saul. Saul means what in Hebrew? Saul. Comes from the Hebrew word Sheol. Sheol, and that's the word for place of departed spirits, or Hades in Greek. All right. What is this now? What, what do we have here in Acts, the ninth chapter? What, what do we have, Cindy? Saul, still drawing his breath hard from threatening and murderous desire against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest. He went to the high priest and he got a, a writ so he could go kill more Christians. All right, go ahead, Cindy. And requested of him letters to the synagogues of the mountains authorizing him so that he could find any man or woman belonging to the way by faith. That word way there, that's the, that's the Christians. All right. He might bring them bound with chains and kill whatever he can kill. All right. Now, what happens to him? On down there, what happens? What happens to Saul? Now, let me tell you the story just a little bit. He's been blinded. He was spiritually blind, so God blinded him. Isaac is spiritually blind, so God blinded Isaac. Okay? Because he couldn't trust him. Now, the Apostle Paul, that was going to be the Apostle Paul, he's going to change his name to Paul, it's going to be from Saul. Saul means the one asked for. Sheol means the place asked about. Okay? So, Saul is blinded because he's spiritually blind. God just teaches him a uh, what we call a, a show-and-tell lesson. Explains it, gives him a demonstration. So he's blinded. And he is not going to receive his sight until what? He goes and, and he's born again, confesses his sin, and is baptized, and then he can see. Isaac died blind. He did. He died blind. All right, Jude. The Jude is only one chapter, so verses 11 and 12 in the book of Jude. By the way, it should be the book of Judah. There are three names for Judah in the New Testament. It is Judas, Judah, and Jude, and it all should be Judah. All right? They should. That's one Hebrew word. It's just Judah or Judah, Yehuda. All right? Who has got Jude uh, there? Who's over there in Jude? You got over there, Brother Roger? <coughs> Can you holler out real loud so the kid? Yes, 11 and 12. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and for pay they have rushed headlong into the error of Balaam, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are the men who are hidden reefs in your love feast, and they feast with you without fear, caring for themselves, clouds with wa without water, carried along by winds, autumn trees without food. When they? All right. They glutton themselves with you. They are gluttonous. Gluttony. They glutton themselves. Doubly dead. Tell you what, God knew, Jehovah knew, that Esau was double dead from the beginning. He was no good. He was not worthy of the inheritance. He was not worthy to be called Inherit. Did we go to Titus 1, 10 through 14 yet? 
All right, Titus 1, 10 through 14. We want to look at these verses thoroughly. We want all of these cross-references because we want to know that we're studying, we're treading. When we, when we say the things we say about Esau and, and uh, Isaac here, we, know, we, we want to know that we're on solid ground. Okay? Titus 1, 10 through 14. Uh, Brother Brown, are you over there? Uh, no? Okay, who's over there? Cindy? You're so fast all the time. Yeah, the Internet. High speed. Base again, base. Remember that base, because he Esau was a base man. He was a very earthly, earthly, earthling, a worldling. He didn't have any spiritual mind at all. Go ahead, Cindy. One of their very number, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, hurtful beasts, idle and lazy gluttons. And this account of them is really true because it is true and sharply, so that they may be sound in faith and free from error. They may show their soundness by ceasing to give attention to Jewish myths and fables or to rules laid down by mere men who reject and turn their backs on the church. All right. Obadiah 1, 8 through 10 also is another uh, prophecy. Deuteronomy 2, 4 through 29. We're not going to go to all these places, but we've looked at enough of them, haven't we? We know what's going on here. God had to intervene to stop a wrongdoing. The spiritual leader, the one that had been entrusted with the act of passing on the birthright and the blessing, he was going to give it to the wrong man. As simple as that. All right. 27 and verse 3 now. 27 and verse 3. Wa ata. And sa. Na. Kilika. Talika. We kosh tika. What see? Hasede. We sedu. Le. Sisera. All right. And now, let's look at his ungodly appetite. <laughs> and now, wa ata. And now, you take up, please. I pray, I beg you, you take up, you carry, you lift, masculine, singular, call, imperative, your weapons. He's thinking about venison all the time. What a sorry situation for a man that thinks he's going to die any time, and all he wants to do is have some wild game, and he had the taste of wild game in his mouth, is what the Hebrews said. He continually having the taste. He craved it. He craved chocolate. <laughs> this wild game, okay? Get your weapons, Kalika, and your quiver, Tilik Telika, and Wakashtika, and bow, and Wetse, uh, and go out. Masculine singular cowl imperative, and go out. On the Hasada. On the prairie. Now, this word here, we have a Hebrew word shod. It's from basically the same root as this. Shod is what? A shad. What is the word? El Shaddai is one of the titles of God. El Shaddai, it means what? The all powerful one, but what does it literally mean? Remember, Cindy? It, 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 shod means breast. All right, shod means breast. Okay, now the the Grecians and the Romans had a goddess that had, was just full of breasts from the top to the bottom. She had like a hundred breasts, and she was a goddess of fertility. All right, and uh, a child was very it was very important that a child when a child was born that he had breast milk to eat because babies have to have breast milk. All right, it's very important. And here we have the word shad. It comes, it means moist, into the land that has dew on it and will grow grass. 
So out where the, the pasture is and everything, you're going to find what? Water or feed for animals. Feed for animals. All right. Shad, moist. All right. That's all, all the term. Out in the field, out in the field, the prairie, El Shaddai, all right, that's where the word Shaddai comes from. Out in the moisture, wet sutah, and hunt. That's in the singular cowl imperative, and hunt for me. Sisera, wild game. I have the taste of wild game in my mouth. I don't want just this goat meat and just this beef. I want wild game. Wa right. ase, 27 verse 4, li, mat amim, kaishur, ahavti, we he, we ha via, li, we o kila, ha avur, ti va rika. Nath she. Be tarim. A mot. And you make, or you do for me, delicacies. <laughs> I want these delicacies. I want this rich food one more time before I die. This rich food. I want to taste this wild game one more time before I die. I remember Brother uh, Martin Kahneman one time, Dr. Martin Van Buren Kahneman, he was preaching. He said, Isn't it a pitiful situation when you got an old man that God has blinded? And the last thing he wants to do is eat some real good, tasty food and die and give the blessing to the wrong man. What a way to go out. Delicacies, Kaishur, which I have loved. I have loved. That's the word hob in there. Oh, my heart's desire is this wild game, which I have loved. First person construct, singular, cow perfect. I have a frog on welfare. At home, a toad on welfare. It's a pitiful situation. Now, I out and out behind my, my back, back door, out there, there's some little barrels out there. And they're wooden barrels, oak barrels, and my wife has vegetables planted in them. And down underneath the vegetables, I've got some little toads out there. I've got one three legged one out there. He's got his front leg cut off somehow or another. And he kind of scoots around. But he'll get out there and figure himself, and I'll shoot these wasps with this BB gun, and they'll fall down, and he'll go, thoop, and grab them, thoop, and grab them. Then he'll crawl back underneath the barrel, and he'll croak when I go by. He'll pull him barrel. Yeah, he'll croak when I go by. He'll croak, Daddy, get me a, get me one of them tasty things. And then I got another one out there in, the, in the shop. And there is a, an, a milk cart crate, about this big, about that wide, and about that tall. And it's kind of honeycomb sides, you know how they are made out of plastic. And on top of that, I have a crock bowl about this big and about that deep. And I have cat food in there for the cats. This one frog, he's supposed to be hunting bugs, you know. He crawls up that egg crate or that uh, uh, milk crate and crawls up and then crawls into that crock bowl and in there and sits there and eats cat food. My frog on welfare. Eating cat food. I went out there the other day and he was so full of cat food that I picked him up and put him out on the ground and he was sitting there going like this. His feet wouldn't reach the ground. Full. Little glutton frog on welfare. Well, out there hunting, what he's supposed to be doing, eating bugs. Well, I put him down there. I'll tell you one thing. When I put him down after he gets in that bowl, he is not going to climb back up. He can't get up. Boy. 27 and verse 4. 
and you make for me delicacies which I have loved and bring in I'm asking the senior Hifel imperative and bring in to me you tell your mom and dad what they missed tonight would you <laughs> and I may eat I may keep on eating all right I may eat in order that she may bless you she may bless you third person feminine singular PL imperfect she may bless you and keep on blessing you my soul not fish nefish it's not she here not she which means my soul my soul she may bless you and keep on blessing you intensely PL stem say that PL that means a whole lot doesn't it and violently my soul may violently bless you before I may keep on being dead before I may keep on being dead you want another verse is that enough I'm going to turn you loose on the world go out and do something eternal we'll start at 27 and verse 5 alright thank you for your attention and uh, I hope the word of God blessed you tonight let's have a word of prayer and like I said go out and do something eternal uh, brother Roger will you dismiss us in prayer please brother father thank you for bringing us here together and giving us the opportunity to read and study your word please help us to apply it to our lives